Okay, let's continue again, making the GPT disk image. Hopefully this or the next one, if we do two videos, will be the last ones for making some command line flags and options just to customize things a little bit, add some more quality of life improvements, you know how it is. Try to finish out a good a good tool, command line tool here for making the GPT disk images. So, last time we got done adding files to the EFI system partition, couple of functions for that, it was a little sloppy. Hopefully a little less sloppy today, we'll see. But I mainly want to make maybe an option struct or, if you will, something like that to encapsulate all these sort of command line arguments we might want to pass to the function, have different things for setting the EFI and data partition sizes, the OBA size, adding files to the EFI system partition through the command line or to the data partition, maybe making a fixed virtual hard disk footer just as an extra thing there. And that's the main set of options there maybe yeah changing the default image name if you want as well and that might be all i do so i'll get on with that we'll get on with it see if i had anything i left a couple little goodies for me to do <laughs> just to get back into it so i can get into a flow state a little easier let's start off with some small things so add f close which i feel like i did before but i guess i overwrote those changes or didn't do them actually but I'm opening the image and not closing it ever. I'm letting the OS take care of that, which is fine. But I probably should do that myself. I feel like I did this before. A little deja vu. Maybe I did not, though. But that's okay. We'll just have that at the end. Or if we have any, uh, I guess for any intermediate like failure states here, we probably should close it. Just in case. Not really sure if it really matters. These two it doesn't really, because it'll be closed at the end anyway. It doesn't matter if we add those. Uh, so, okay. What do I have? Change path to path 25. I'm allocating a small buffer, and I did the same thing up here, but I just set it to a sort of, not static buffer, but this will be on the stack instead of using C alloc for the heap. 25 bytes, it really doesn't matter. LBA size, it doesn't necessarily matter either. Our stack size is going to be at least a few kilobytes on Linux or any modern system. But 25 bytes is pretty small, that's true. Eh, we could, yeah, we could change that. That'll just be on the stack for this function here, or what have you. And we'll still be able to string copy. We can free up a line for freeing that data. We don't need to do that. And that'll be all right. We did that, we added it, okay. So let's make some options. We'll set some sizes. We can print out data to the user after we do that, just for the set options and everything. I guess I'll make a struct for that, because I kind of want to encapsulate it within a sort of object, if you will. I've done that before. So I'll just add that up here. So I'll say internal uh, options, I don't know. <laughs> internal options object for command line args, we'll say. So we'll have a struct for this. I don't care if it's padded or not, but I'll just call it options. And we'll have some different types here, depending on whatever things we want to do. So say we want to set the image name. We'll have character image name be a thing in here. If we want to set uh, files within the EFI system partition, we'll have stuff for that. That I might put on the heap if we pass in multiple files. Let's say we have ESP file paths. Maybe we'll have, a, we'll have multiple files there. And I'll probably have, just to be able to see how much we have to go through later if I want to add multiple. And we'll have data files. We won't pass uh, full paths to add to the data partition because there's no file system in the basic data partition. It's just blank data that we're just going to write other bytes onto it, override it with other things. But I can try to add multiple here. In the past revision of this tool, I did not have support for multiple files at once, so that might be good to add, a little quality of life thing. A little tougher, that's okay. I'll have a help option, so let's say a boolean if they want to look at help, maybe an error flag if we have an error getting these options. I might get rid of this later, but that might be good. Uh, what else? The OBA size, I'll add that here. In case the user wants to set a different size for disk sectors, instead of 512 bytes, we could go up to 4K. Assuming I have everything in place to work for that, I don't know if I do. <laughs> I mostly do. But what else would we have there? ESP and data sizes, LBA size, 
set the disk image name, add EFI system partition files, add data partition files, and a fixed VHD and help. Okay. And in case they want to make a fixed VHD, I'll just say bool VHD for a fixed virtual hard disk footer, because that's pretty easy. It's just adding 512 bytes to the end of our disk image. And then other tools might like to know the size of something for VHD or Windows. If you put a valid footer onto it, Windows can natively mount a VHD. You don't need external tools to mess with the EFI system partition. Linux, I use like NBD, network block device. I've been using that to mess with mounted partitions from this disk image. Um, but there's probably other tools for Linux as well. That was just the easiest one I found. Yapping too much. We have options here. Let's say we get options in, I don't know, in main or something. So get options passed in from the command line, which means, hey, we're going to get rid of int main void. We're going to move up to move up in the world to the regular argv good goodness. If my pinky knows where the brackets are, there we go. So let's say we have a get ops function. Maybe we can we can pass in an options struct maybe from that, or we can pass it into the options function. I don't know. I know we'll have to pass in argc and argv if we want to evaluate those within this function. We'll say we do that. And I had an error thing in there. So this is different than how I did it before. I'm just testing things out. If we get an error, which I did make a boolean up here. Yeah, bool error. Then we'll end. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll print out the error within the getOps function. So yeah, we'll just end if if that happens. Oh, and I should do the f close again, right? Okay, but let's make that function, and then I guess we'll set values from that afterwards. So set values from, I guess from options. We'll have something for that. I don't know if I want to do it inline and main or not. I guess if we're only going to set like global things, it doesn't matter. I may just do it inline and main, so I'll, I'll find out in a bit. But let's make this git ops function. So we'll say git parse uh, input arguments from command line or what have you. I'll say git ops, passing in int argc and the strings from argv. So how are we going to go through that? Well, I'm going to have a little loop counter here to go through all the argc options. We'll start at 1 because argv 0 is going to be just the name of this program itself when it's invoked. So we can start at 1 to get the first option to pass in, or the first option that was passed in, rather. So we'll just do that. And I guess we'll just go with string compares. We can't switch on strings. I mean, we could make a hash of strings and then put that in a lookup table or whatever, and, or otherwise compute a hash and then switch on that. But you need an int for a switch value, which is lame. So we'll have a bunch of if elses and it's not gonna be great, but oh well. So say string compare, string in compare for whatever options we have. Maybe the first one's gonna be help or something. We'll have some help text which means I need some global help text, um, or I can print it inline down here. We'll say set or evaluate values, whatever. Okay, so let's say we're going through argvi, and we're gonna see what we got. I can make short and long names. We'll say dash h is help, or dash dash help is gonna be help. And we just need to check, not the length of argvi, but the length of, I suppose, h would be okay. So I'll do string length which I know it's two, but just if I do this, I can copy and paste better later. <laughs> Maybe. Or I can just do string compare. Yeah, it's, it's worse, but whatever. Whatever. I'm assuming you, you know what you're doing when you're using this. Uh, let's say we have help here. So we'll print help text and exit. Ultimately, that's what we're going to do. So since I have an option struct, well, I'm returning it right. I said I was going to return it and not take it as input to this function. Okay, so let's do that. So we'll have options, options, and that will just be null to start out. And then we'll set the values in there. So options help equals true. We'll continue to the next one. Actually, we'll exit 
As soon as they do that, we're not going to evaluate anything. I'll just return. And that'll be all right. To do other options. Let's see what all I got up here, because I don't remember. Let's just put that, that sucker there. All right, but for example, we're, we're going through the options that we set here. So I can say if options help, we want to print help text, right? So I'll do to do print help text, right? And then we'll say that's a, that's a success. They wanted to do that. It's not really a failure, but we'll do that in a bit. But you know, I don't know if I want another function to go through all these things or just do them inline. It's not too bad doing them inline, so we'll find out. So this we did this, I will be incremented to the next one if we do, if we don't return at the end of the loop. So, okay, I guess I'll go down the list here. I'll just have different things here. So let's say if we want to set the image name, I guess I'll do dash I and we'll do image name for the long version. That'll probably be okay. And at the normal, if we're not going to return, I'll just do a continue here so that it'll iterate I to the next one and go on. But image stuff like this will have an extra argument after the flag or after this option. So we'll do like dash I uh, disk dot HDD or something, right? This will be the argument after this flag that we're checking. So we're going to have to get that argument somehow. And we can do I plus plus to go to the next arg and check arg V, I suppose. It still needs to be less than argc, so we probably do need another check if you're not doing it correctly. Um, I would need another check within all these, actually. That would be bad. <laughs> I would have to do, like, if plus plus i is greater than argc, we don't really want to do that. Or if it equals argc, I guess. Uh, we'd return. We'd set the error flag in return. Hopefully they don't do that, though. Let's assume we have a happy case here. And we'll say argvi is going to be the name of the image that we're going to do. So let's say options.image name is going to equal that. We could also allocate data for the string and copy it over. But I think this will be okay because argvs, this is already going to be a string for the option passed in from the command line. So we can just set the two character pointers equal. That'll be all right. Yeah. Okay. That should be all right. But yeah, I probably should do this. So. I don't know if I should do greater or equal. We're only going up till it equals. So I'll just have both <laughs> and see if that's an issue later in practice. So we'll do options.error equals true. And we'll just uh, return in that case. So not really great, but that's all right. Else, then this will happen. Okay, so this will be setting the image name. Set name of image. Instead of using default name. Really, I could set, well, yeah. Separation of concerns, I'll set it down here. If they have an image name, that will not be a null pointer, so we'll do that here. And again, it's going to be just argvi, I think, which would be okay if we use image name for that. So this is a global variable I set in the beginning. From the beginning. Right there, so we'll do that here. That'll just be options image name. I think I can do that. Invalid initializer. Yes, because I'm not returning it. Yeah. Forgot about that. We'll do this. <laughs> At the end, we'll return options. There we go. That's what we need to do. All right, return with no value function. That's true. That's 856. So I have to return that for any of these. That's all right. Okay. All right, we'll be good there. We did the image. We did help. So what else do we have? I think this will work if we set the name here. That's, that can just be a one-liner probably. Uh, 
other options here, just so I don't forget that. All right, what do we have? LBA size, we can do that. So let's say it'll be dash L or dash dash LBA size. So set size of LBA or disk sector instead of default. 512 bytes. I guess you could set it to 512 though, and that would be all right. But I also want to enforce a minimum size for this, and I can just hard code those, but the minimum size, if you weren't there, you don't remember, but you still care somehow. <laughs> According to how big a FAT32 file system has to be for the EFI system partition, we need a certain number of clusters, and I'm using one sector per cluster, so the same as a certain number of sectors. You need 65525 as the minimum size in clusters for a FAT32 file system, which is what I'm using for the EFI system partition. I'm making it a minimum of 65536 because I like that as a nice round number and it adds a little bit of padding instead of 65525. I'm also using a default alignment value for partitions and things of one megabyte. And if you take those into consideration, for a 512 byte LBA size, the minimum you can have is 33 megs just by default. So I'm just going to set a minimum size for that later, depending on the LBA size here for the EFI system and data partitions, if we want to use those options. And these are the minimums for these, so I'm just going to hard code these values probably <laughs> for the megabyte sizes, but those will be for other options. Anyway, just letting that be known. We're only allowed to use 512, 1024, 248, and 4096 as the sector values anyway, so I'll check for that as well. And again, we'll have to do I++. So I guess I'll check on that. And that'll increment, just making sure, yeah, that would increment that, okay. So argvi in this case would be the size of LBA. So options, LBA size would be that, but that would be a character, and I want to do a uint32 here. So we can do a to i, but that's actually string to l under the hood of our, our thing here, in null and a base of 10, or the radix, whatever you want to call that. So that should convert the string to a number and return that as the LBA size. And then we'll say if options LBA size is not equal to any of the valid options, which is 512, 1024, 2048, and 4096, then we want to error on that. Um, We'll do that. So error invalid, invalid OBA size. I could print out errors when I do this stuff, can't I? Probably, that would probably be good. <laughs> Am I handling the error down here? Yeah, exit failure, okay. Yeah, I probably should, should do that. So this do error invalid OBA size must be one of 512, 1024, 2048, 4096. All right, we'll say that's fair. Options error would be true in this case, and we would return options. Else we would continue because we would have set the value right there. And let's say, let me copy these actually. Other options, don't need to handle error, but I do need to handle these. That's where I do help, that's the image name, did that, LBA size. So how do we check if they actually pass that? We'll just say if they have LBA size because coercing to an int <laughs> and a value of non-zero for an int means it's a true, a truthy value if you will, so that'll count as true. And we'll just set the value from there. That should be okay. I should be testing these as we go along. I know I'm not. Sorry about that. Is that all we need to do? I think that's all we need to do. Just test for their condition, set it, and forget it. No issues when compiling. That's good. All right, let's test this so far. Nothing to be done for all, really. Are you sure about that? I kind of just made 
things happen. Oh, I opened the, and I did have the VHD spec open, didn't I? That's funny. Nothing to be done. I don't think, oh yeah, because I did, I did make within them, sorry. Confused myself. All right, so if we have an option like LBA size or dash L, I'll have LBA size of 1024, right? It'll work, it'll make the image, but the image is not gonna work because I don't have tools that work with that. And this will probably have errors, maybe not. Yeah, see, so my tool is still gonna work with 512 bytes, so that's not really great. And it doesn't find the partitions either, so I know that's bad. And if I did something egregious, like I said, 4096, um, it's really not gonna work for that. Well, I'm not setting different EFI sizes or anything either, so I probably should set different sizes. I'm not enforcing minimums just yet. But that's probably the main reason why. But tools like SGDisk only work for 512 bytes. That's why I can't really test really well if things work with non 512 byte sectors. But I'll have the option there regardless. So, oh well. Now if we do dash H, nothing will happen. It shouldn't make the image. Well, it'll initially open the file, so it probably will make the image, but it'll be an empty image because we won't write to it. Okay. What what else did I do? Nothing, nothing, that's true, nothing. <laughs> I do need to set minimums for the LBA and stuff, for the sizes. I need to do that, I guess under here, yeah. Enforce minimum sizes for uh, EFI system partition. Data partition doesn't really matter, actually. Probably just the EFI system partition. That matters according to the, L the LBA size. I'll do that as well. <laughs> Trying to keep stuff in my head okay. All right, we'll set up the other options here. I guess error, I mean, I'm handling the error. That's okay. We'll do this. There's probably another option or two I'm missing that I don't know because I don't remember all what I did before and I should look it up, but I'm not going to. So let's say we have something like AE or add files to EFI or add ESP files, we'll say. Add files to the EFI system partition. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Why, why does my jump list mess up all the time? I just wanted to copy some uh, some comments there. Add files to the EFI system partition. Okay. So how would I do that? Well, I do I plus plus, and let's say we have we have while I is less than arg c and mm, arg v i. Um, I guess arg v i zero is not while we. We're still going to read files after this point. We'll read in paths, I guess, and other things. So how am I going to do this? But I want to stop when I hit another option, and another option would start with a slash or or a double slash. So if the first, or sorry, a dash. So if the first character is like a hyphen or a dash here, I want to stop reading that, right? We'll do that. So this is going to be fun. <laughs> so I'll say grab next two args. First will be path to add. Uh, second will be file, or no, I can just pass the whole path because I'm going to, yeah, first will be path to add, second will be file to add to path. Yeah, let me let me do it like this. So on the command line, I'm going to have, just to be able to do autocomplete and stuff, because if you're typing stuff you want to add like test.image or whatever, you can autocomplete that, right? Or if you want to add you know, EFI.C or something, right? You can auto-complete this and you can have it be separate, but that's the file to add. So what I'm gonna do is say, we wanna add like EFI directory B, um, we wanna add something to this path and the file we wanna add to it maybe is this other file we have over here. So I'm gonna take what this equals, uh, well, this kinda sucks because I'm gonna have to get, in, get the last name, but I can use string R character for that, so never mind. I'm gonna take this first path and I'm gonna concatenate the file on the second, the file on the second path, put that on the end of here, and then I'll send that whole path to our function we created in the last video to add the path to the ESP. That's what I'm hoping to do here. That's my game plan. We'll see if that works. 
Don't know if that'll work. We'll see if it works. So argvi. Of course, if they don't have two here, then that's not good. So let's say if i plus two is greater than or equal to argc, that's going to be an error. Need at least two more args for path and file to work. For this to work. <laughs> say we have an error here, we'll print out. We'll say error must include at least uh, one path and one file to add to ESP. It's, it's fair, that's fair, right? Okay, then we'll go on and we'll get the next two. So maybe I'll do that while it's less than, yeah, I'll include that. So argvi would be the path. And the next one, I'll say i plus one would be a file. So how would we do this? I have ESP file paths here. I guess I can start off by allocating some default space. And I'm also going to input probably an arbitrary limit of, let's say, 14 files specifically, because a directory in FAT32 can have 16 directory entries at the minimum LBA size. So really, we could change it depending on the LBA size, I guess. 512 bytes. We can have 32 bytes directory entries. We can have 16 of those to be 512 bytes for directory until we need another cluster. And I don't want to deal with adding more than one cluster because I'm lazy and trying to keep the scope down for this tool right now. So let's say we have a minimum of 14 files because you might auto add the boot x64 EFI to the EFI boot directory. And we're going to have a disk image file added there as well. That's two files. Well, also you have the dot and dot dot directory entries. So we would actually have a minimum of 12 files. Maybe to keep it even, we'll just say 10 is the limit. <laughs> we'll just say 10 is going to be the limit. So let's say, uh, not, a, not a great way of doing this. Let's say EFI file paths, right? Let's allocate, I don't know, some limit of things there. Or we can just allocate as we go along. It'll be a little bit slower, but that might be okay. So let's have, I need to concatenate these two. Let's have it be the first one and then concat the second one onto the end, I guess. Yeah, let's, let's do that, okay. So let's have ESP file paths, whatever our num file paths is going to be. Num ESP file paths. So the first one, we're just gonna have a pointer. It's gonna be a null pointer. We have to set it to something. So let's allocate some amount of data. I'll just have C alloc one thing for, I don't know, we could have it be buff size for a long, a very long name. <laughs> or we can have it be less, like 256. Maybe that'll work. And we'll have to go through and um, free those later if they happened. Oh, I'll do that down here, probably. Num ESP file pass is greater than zero. We'll do other things. Add paths to ESP and free, free data allocated for file paths from options. Okay. We'll do that. So let's just get the option first. Let's say we allocate thing here. We'll have options. I'm going to copy into that. Or, well, we could take it from argv, but I don't want to concat onto an argv. So I'll just, yeah, I'll just do this. It's not great, but that's all right. And I'm also assuming the length is less than or equal to 256, which is, that's, that's not good. So. I have ESP file pass according to the number that we're currently on. And we'll put argvi into there. For the length of argvi, argvi. So get path to add. 
concat file to add to path. We'll do that. I guess string in cat would be another option as well. We'd cat onto there, argv i plus plus. We'll do plus plus. No, don't want to do that because we use it in both. We'll do that. Okay. And then I'll increase the number of files that we just added. Num ESP file paths plus plus. And that'll be all right, maybe. So we get one, we get another. I need to increment it again for this. We'll just do that for i plus plus equal one. That'll start off with i plus plus. We'll do this i plus plus. So it'll get the first one, add i, it'll get the second one, add i, get the next one, get the next one. Okay, yeah, we'll do it like that. Not great, but that's that's what we'll do. I'll also enforce a limit here. Arbitrary limit, you can, um, you know, leave it as an exercise to the watcher to make things better, of course. If it's greater than 9, if it's greater than 10, I'll say the limit's going to be. If it's greater than 9, really, because we start at 0. We'll just do that. We'll have an error in that case. Error number of... ESP files to add must be less than or equal to 10. Arbitrary limit. But that's okay. And really, if we want to do this here, we can do this here, and it'll add to it. <laughs> Some good C stuff for that. C function handling. All right. Hopefully that adds paths all right. That will stop when we hit a minus. So if the next argument is a minus, then it just won't go through at all. It'll continue. And continue would then skip over it because we're incrementing i here as well. Hmm. That might not be good. If they input something like dash ae and then dash other option, you know, we'd increment once, it would be this. But we want to have that option be evaluated up there, even if this is wrong, right? But say we add a file. We have file path one, file one. We'd get the path, we'd get the file, concat it onto the path, so it'd be like that, hopefully. I guess I'm not concatting with um, a slash. But we probably should ensure that we have a slash in there. Or we can add a slash. Uh, so what if they want to add like ESP boot and they don't put a slash? We should probably ensure we have one there. So how would I do that? Sure path ends in slash. But if they did add one and we can cat it and we're good, we want to go to the other one, that's okay. So we'll want to do minus minus after that probably. Um say overall for loop will increment i in order to get next option decrement here okay uh, let's end in a slash here so if the argv the one we just got just because that's less the type than this whole thing <laughs> if argv i Offset by string length, argvi, because that would be the whole length, that would be the last character, should be. So if we had something like, if I boot, well, I want to make sure it starts with a slash as well. Starts and ends with a slash. I'm only doing fully qualified paths, I'm not having anything be implicit here. Let's do this. If argv i zero not equal slash or uh, string length. So length of this would be what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then it would have a null on the end, right? So it should be nine. 
of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But the length would be 9, but we want to say the offset would be 8, right? Okay, so it'd be string length minus 1. And we'll have an error there. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll say all paths to add to ESP. All file paths. All file paths to add to ESP must start and end with slash. I don't think that's that bad. I don't think that's a bad thing to require. That'll be all right. Otherwise, we'll concat the file to the path. Hopefully that's good. Hopefully this doesn't end in a slash. <laughs> but whatever. So I need the file. If they autocomplete or something and there's, um, you know, like I was doing earlier, maybe they do relative paths before the file or it's in another uh, folder underneath the thing. You know, like this, we want to add here.txt, but it's in this folder thing. We need to get the name, just the name, like base name or something, um, to concat here from argvi. So let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Get only last name and path. So that would be, let's do final slash. That's going to be <laughs> string r character, so reverse from argvi, given the slash character. If it's not there, they just gave a file, so that's fine. I'll just call it slash. If not slash, then Guns N' Roses will miss a key member, I guess. Was he in Guns N' Roses? I forget. <laughs> then we'll just concat, it's a plain file name. Um, no, I don't know, folder path. Yeah. Okay, else. Yeah, we'll do that. No folders. No folder prefix. Yeah, we'll just say no folders. Um, we have a slash position. Well, this is going to point to the position within argvi, so we don't have to offset argvi by anything. That's a, that is pointing to that position. So we can do string cat from that position, and that'll be all right. And string like slash. That should be all right. Hopefully, maybe it won't be, but hopefully. And we'll do that. Uh, num ESP file paths undeclared because it's in options. Yes, that's true. Oh, this is, maybe I named things too long. That's, that's a super long thing we're doing here. What am I typing Java? What are we doing? That's a bit much. That's okay. Says so five bound depends on the length of the source argument. Well, yeah, it does. Oh, you want it dependent on the destination length, do you? What? You gotta be difficult here, pal. Why you gotta be difficult like that? That's okay. Well, I need to know how big this is, because I did, well, no. I have the length here, it's 256. That's, that's fine. I'll just have an arbitrary length here of 256. Uh, I'll just have an int, why not? We'll have int max length 256. Equals destination side, but you don't want it to be what you don't want it to be the length of the source or destination. Or no, a string cat it doesn't want to be source. Copy it wants to be destination. Okay. Whatever guy. Why gotta be so difficult? But then it doesn't like that either. What is the what you don't like either of those? It's string. Am I doing string in copy wrong? Dest source size tn what is going on here what's wrong with it equaling the destination size is that an issue 
I guess we don't want it because it has to be plus one. Okay, I'll do 257. I'll do some other number. 256 minus one. I don't know. No, we'll do that. We'll just do minus one. That's that's fine. We'll do max length minus one. That's probably what it wants. Yeah, that's what it wants. Okay. I don't know how to program in C. Sorry about that. I'm not tired. I'm not tired at all. Who's tired? I'm not tired. So it wants slash to not be uh, the destination, right? Depends on the length of the source argument. Uh, we want it to be destination instead, I guess, for this. It doesn't care about this, though. That's interesting. I mean, it was a warning, so it went through anyway, but... Okay. I'll just do max length for all these. That's that's fine. Equals this, the old minus one. Give her the old subtract one. Okay. Okay, now that the compiler's nice and not yelling at me anymore, I think we can move on, right? <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> so let's say we did this for now. All right, let's see. How would we handle adding stuff? I do need to check that this works as well, setting the image size. How do we handle adding these paths? Well, assuming the paths are all right, we would just go through and add them all, right? So it's a UNT32T. We'll have, and again, I'll use I. I will be less than options, ESP file paths, uh, num ESP file paths. And we'd call add. Well, I I would do this later because we haven't even like written the image yet. But let me lay this out first. Add path to ESP of options ESP file paths I. I think that would be okay, and that's all we would have to do. And then we would free them, of course. I could just do it here before I forget, or do it all later in one go, which would probably be better. Yeah, we'll add the path and free it. EFI system partition. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. But I want to handle that after we actually make the disk image, after at least we make the EFI system partition, right? I'll do it after we add the ESP as well in the disk image file. I'll do that here. Okay. Just so the other things are added first. And the data files as well, I'll add down there, as well as maybe the VHD. We can check for all those. We can check for all these last. That's okay. Those will be like final adding options. Enforce minimum size according to OBA size. Oh, we also need to set the EFI. Oh, yeah, that's. I knew I was forgetting stuff. Why do I always forget things? Okay. Because <laughs> I have to write them down. All right, I'm not making an evaluate function. Uh, yeah, I can also just do as a separate, whatever. All right, yeah, I want to set the ESP and data partition sizes. That's what I want to do. I want options for that. Okay. Let's add that. I'll add that here. You want 32T. We'll have ESP size. And we'll have data size. ESP and data size. Can't believe I forgot that so far. That's that's not great. I'll do that here. I'll say if options ESP size, we want to do that and enforce a minimum. And we'll have a data size as well. I probably will enforce a minimum of that. Although I guess we don't need to. I'm going to put alignment of one megabyte regardless, but I guess we don't have to actually have a size here. And I'll set default sizes, I suppose. ESP, size and OBAs, data size and OBAs. Well, those will be calculated after this. All these will. So yeah, that'll be okay. 
we can just do these first. That'll be okay. Do that. Okay, so ESP size will equal options, ESP size. I know I didn't lay this out in the options function yet. But just doing that. And these could be, this could be a one-liner. ESP, I'll have a minimum. That'll be more than a one-liner, but that'll be all right. So let's say, say we have the LBA sizes here. So if LBA size, I could enforce this in the options function, actually. Let's do that. Yeah, okay. I'll enforce that up, up here. Before this, we'll do it after the OBA size. Okay, let's say E or ES. I guess I'll make two characters there. ESP size. Because I did two characters for this one. So what are we going to do that? Set size of EFI system partition. We're going to have it be in megabytes. In megabytes. I'll say megabytes, min and black. We'll do that, and okay, so how are we gonna do this? I just wanna enforce a minimum here in megabytes like these. I'll have these be here. Enforce minimum size of ESP per LBA size. So if LBA size equals 512, I guess we'll have to do that in both though, well, I'll just say it can't be less than, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think, because we could do these options in a different order. They could have the ESP size after the LBA size in the command line, or they could have the LBA size after the ESP size. So I have to make it kind of work in general for both. If they don't do this, it's invalid. I guess I wouldn't really care. I just have to say, I don't, we have to enforce this at this point. Yeah. Yeah, we'd have to enforce this in, in both of these in case they do them, you know, in a different order. So, okay. I guess I should have laid this out before copying it. Copying it. But if it's 512 and argvi, well, let's get a ESP size first. So ESP size will be, again, string to L of argvi. Given null for that, and 10 is the base. And that is, am I doing that right? Just to show, <laughs> the restrict end pointer, yeah, I'm doing null for the end, the end pointer. Uh, the base is going to be 10 that I'm doing, arbitrary amount of white space. If end pointer is not null, it has the address of the first invalid character, I don't really care. So, <laughs> we'll just do that. So, we'll say less than 33, or... That'll be the minimum for that. Or we'll have options ESP size less than times two minus one, 67. And we'll have less than, well, it's like 129, right? What did I do? Add it up here. 33, oh, 65, not 67. So yeah, 33, 65, 129, 257. I can do math. Times two would be 66 plus one, but minus one would be yeah, 65. Uh, times two is 130 minus one, times two is 258 minus one, 257. Okay, so if either of the, if any of these are true, that would be an error. We'll do that. Why is that bad? Oh, I need another brace there, another parenthesis. So we'll do f print f. So 
what is the error here, son? I guess I would print that info. Uh, ESP must be a minimum of, we'll just do this, 33651292.57 megabytes for, uh, for LBA sizes 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, respectively. There we go. I think that's an okay error. It's not great, but that's all right. Let's just copy all of that and put it here. There we go. So we set the size, it's there. Of course, if we set this, if we have the size, this won't even go through if this is like zero, right? If it's not set yet, so that's okay. But if they did set an LBA size, this would be checked. And if they did not set an ESP size, this would not be checked. But if they did, this would be checked. So yeah, if I have it in both, that should be okay. Okay, we'll check data size as well, assuming these things are all right. Let's, have, let's say that's DS. The Nintendo DS, which I had once upon a time. I liked it. I had the silver one, the OG. I have the 3DS as well, but I don't play with it that much. I got like one of those like Nikon, those third party battery packs that last longer, but it was like kind of rubberized. So after a while it's tacky and sticky and it's kind of gross. So I need to see if I have the original battery pack someday, someday or just not mess with it. Or just not mess with it. Probably should have this abstracted too, because copying it everywhere is bad. I could just have this be a function or something, but whatever, that's fine. Uh, data size. There isn't really a limit to this, so we could just set it and forget it. Uh, where's my string to L? That's what I want. There we go. Data size will be that, and then we'll return. So we could have a minimum of zero, I think, and we could have a max of whatever, you know, according to your file system issues on your end, if it's large enough. Okay. Then we have data files. I need something for that, and I don't have it. That's all right. Let's say we have data size. That'll be all right. ESP size, and that's already enforced the checks above. And these should be determined from there. So yeah, I do want to add text for the user to see what they're doing here. Print info on sizes and image uh, for user. So let's do that. We'll just print F some stuff here. We'll say image name, did we set? Yeah, if they set the image name, it'll have that. So let's do that. So I have percent S. And what else will we do? Let's say ESP size we'll have, and that's a UN64, right? So if we're on Windows or Linux or something, they'll have LLU or LU for the format string for that. So I'll use the macro that I did last time. So we'll have percent, we'll have PRI for print and a U64. And that'll expand to L or LOU or whatever, depending on the platform you're compiling under. I we'll have image name, I we'll have ESP size. I know the last thing will need to be a comma and then the arguments here. So we'll have data size. This will be in megabytes as well. So let's say it might be. I can add padding. Which is going to be UNT64 right up here. And we'll have the overall image size, image size. I guess I don't need it to be all caps, but whatever. We'll just yell at you. We'll do it old school style. We'll yell at you. And what else do we need? Is that it, maybe? We'll add the files from adding them to the ESP. It'll print to the screen already the, the file path that was added. So that's okay. And I can do the same thing for adding files to the data partition. 
So that might be all we need here. Right now, I might add some other stuff later. So the ESP is going to be the ESP size. We'll have data size, we'll have padding, we'll have image size. All right. And I got to mess some stuff up. So image name. Oh, image name as well. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Add ESP, add path to ESP, file paths, 1115. That is a function. I do need to add that where I'm doing that. Add path to ESP, too few arguments. That is true. It takes in the image as well. Function main, expected, write per in before, quote, for free. I am forgetting how functions work. Okay, we made that. So if I do a write with nothing, we'll say, okay, we have the image name, we have the default sizes. It's not that many megabytes, that's in bytes. Let me fix that. <laughs> Let me fix that right quick. We'll have to divide by whatever, it's the alignment value, right? It's in the enum up here. Ooh, yeah, the alignment value, because it's in terms of megabytes, or mebabytes. Alignment. Okay. Mm, invalid operands to binary image name. We don't have to do that. Why did I do that? Because I'm not reading what I'm doing. There we go. ESP is 33 meg by default. Data size is 1 meg. Padding is 2. So this whole, the full size is 36. And we added that file, I guess, to the ESP. So I guess you would have to know that that's the ESP. But yeah, I could probably add that as info as well. Maybe better. Uh, add it, yeah, right here. So I'll say added this to ESP. Okay. And then I can say for the data partition later, it'll add to data partition instead. But yeah. I might do that. Yeah, let's just, I'll make it fully qualified. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what I would want if I was using this, and I will be using it. So, so I want as much info as I can get to not have to guess. So that'll be all right. And it is 36 meg. And it is okay, no errors there. And we're good, okay. Added disk image. We did not add the boot x64 EFI, but that is all right. So what do we, if we mess with it and we say the ESP size is going to be 20, we should have an error. I do not have an error. That's that's not good. ESP size is zero. Ooh, interesting. That's what I get for trying to test things. <laughs> uh, I didn't set an LBA size, so that's zero. So this went on. That is true, I should test for that when I do the ESP size. Okay, so I still have to add a test, that's okay. I am all right with that. I'm all right with that being the test. Uh, just go back down. Okay, where are we going here? Enforce minimum sizes for ESP. According to OBA size. Except this won't be options, this will just be this. Uh, well, I could set this first, that's fine. Um, and I did this up here. ESP size, uh, all paths. Nope, I need this. I want this error. Go back down where I was, print this error. Okay. <laughs> oh, always good testing things, right? So if you write it by default, it's that. If you write 20, 
ESP must be minimum for OVA sizes. Okay, it doesn't print the OVA size. Let me do that as well. I'm just figuring things out as I'm going. Sorry if that's annoying. <laughs> it's probably a little bit annoying. I don't know. Um, I don't need this here. OBA size, it's also going to be a UNT64. We won't need the megabytes though. We'll just add slash image name, OBA size. Okay, 512. So that way we'll say, hey, OBA size is 512. We need a minimum of 33. So if we do that, it'll still, well, it says 33. That's interesting. Image size 3 meg. What if I do 34? Okay, it's not setting the size right. <laughs> Why you do? Why you no do? ESP size is options ESP size. What's wrong with that? Is it because I'm dividing by 1048? Yeah, probably. And 33 divided by 1 megabyte value is going to be low. So the ESP size needs to be this multiplied by the alignment. So we actually set it to that megabyte value. Yeah, that makes more sense. Why did I not think of that until right now? I cannot tell you. This is sloppy as the other one. I'm, I'm, I need to not record when I'm tired. Oh, that's okay. This is how a developer gets along. There we go, 20, it's 23. Again, that should not be allowed. Let's do that again. We'll just do this. Yeah, we'll just do this. That, that would be better. If I multiply it, it's a large number, and then this doesn't come into play, so we need to compare megabyte values first. After that, I'll set the actual value in the alignment. So then we have the Goldilocks issue. If that doesn't work, but if we write it of 33, hey, we actually get it 33. If we write 34, hey, we get 34. And the, Thing should be 37, and it says 37. So if we write our ESP is 50 megs, then it'll do 50. And that shows 53, because that's the image size. Okay, so the sizes are working. Uh, let's say we do 40, and the data size is gonna be zero. Data size is one meg. Oh, because I'm not setting the data size and options, am I? No. I don't think I'm doing that yet. Oh, yeah, I am. Options data size. If it's zero, that would be zero. Oh, because I have, yeah. So we need a minimum of one, because <laughs> if I put in zero, then the check doesn't work within main. Because I have options data size. How do I know if I put in a number, right? Right here, how do I know if I put in a number for data size if you're going to put in zero? So actually, I guess it needs a minimum of one. Uh, so that's fun, but you know. I'll just put note, data partition will always be at least one megabyte in size. You know what, we're going to deal with it, right? The default is one. If you put a larger amount, though, like two, it'll make it two. So that's okay. <laughs> so we have, yeah, two megs for the data. So that does work, but it'll have a minimum of one because that's how I did it. And you know what, that's all right. If you wanna add a kernel or other stuff to that, then you can add stuff to that if you want. So I am okay with that enforcing a minimum size and this stuff's good and that's good, okay. Let's try the image name. Let's say dash i, or we'll try a double here. Image name uh, disk.hdd. Image name disk.hdd. Did we find it? Oh, we did not find it because I opened the image before this point, and I don't need to do that. I need to do it at least after this point. Um, I'm not writing to anything until this point down here. Let's do it before here, after these options. Open image. Okay. 
Undeclared F10, 10,000. So I'm going to have to move some stuff around. If options error, we're F closing. Yeah, well. If we error, then that's fine. We'll error. That's completely fine. We don't need to open the image at that point, so that's all right. So we're good. Test.image. So let's write disk.hdd. And it gave the image name because I didn't do anything and it didn't take that off. Yeah. Oh, because I need to do, yeah. Image name, just for example, then it names it that. Oh, we have the file there. It works. I mean, why wouldn't it? We're just setting another character pointer for it, but still. It's good to know that it works, right? And we can mix and match the options as we will. The help text, I, I might do that off camera because it's just writing a, a paragraph of text. <laughs> what do we have? The data files and the VHD. I think are the only other things I want to add. So let's, let me just double, double, triple make sure here. Image size and other info, I did add that. Check the ESP and data partition size, add a minimum check. I just hard coded that. <laughs> I did even note here, yeah, I had a minimum of one meg. Anyway, that's, that's fine. OVA size, okay. Disk image name. Files to the EFI system partition. We need to check that that works. And this I can't verify. Yeah, if you have any tools that work with like 4K native drives or you know, or you know how to emulate properly through QEMU or something to check LBA size greater than 512, let me know because I don't have or know of anything that lets me do that. And I searched online and some QEMU options for emulating virtual IO for SCSI for 4K native attempts did not work. And I, you know, I don't know what to do there. So just as an aside, <laughs> if you know how to test for that, I don't know how to test for that. So let me know. Um, I need to add stuff for the data partition as well. Okay, so yeah. Let's try adding files to the ESP, which will have paths. Let's try, didn't make anything. Let's try adding um, AE, and let's try a couple file paths. So let's say, what do I have in my current file here? Disk HDD, let me remove that. Let's try adding the license. We'll say the license in the README. I don't know. And some a file in another in another folder. So let's add multiple files here. Let's say I want to add under just EFI. Actually, I'll add a different directory. So let's say the license directory. We'll start and end with a slash, start with root, and then I'll add my license file. And then I'm also going to add under EFI boot, I'll add another file. Let's say we have um, my EFI.c or something. And congratulations, we got a segmentation fault. That's, that's C for you. That's all we want. What if I just want to add the license file? Segmentation fault. Wonderful. We did make a test.image though. But that was three minutes ago, so I guess that didn't work. Okay, so we can't add files to the ESP. I have to debug that. Maybe the string length here didn't work. Or argv didn't work. Well, it didn't get back to errors. Num file paths, that'll all be zero at the start, right? Yeah, that would be zero. It's probably in the loop down for adding stuff. I started it at one. I allocated the length. I'm just copying argvi into there here. Let's just do a basic test. Didn't even get to that point. Okay. Oh, we got a seg fault after. Okay, so that might be checking this, the argvi. Maybe that's like read-only memory. It doesn't like me checking that. I don't, I should be able to though. Or it doesn't like this. That, that shouldn't be correct. Oh, it might not like, probably doesn't like that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be true. Let's do that. Cause I did a double pointer for that. 
that's my bad. If it adds the first one, it won't be able to add the second one or whatever, because, yeah, it might not even be able to add the first one, because, well, the first one would work because of this, but not beyond that. Let's see if that's the issue. I'll just malloc 10 files. So my limit was 10, right? Yeah. 10 times um, size of char pointer, I guess. That's a type, so we need to parenthesize that, 10 times that. All right, so that's space for the paths. And we'll have these themselves. Uh, don't want to do that. I didn't want to do whatever I just did. Okay. Okay, there we go. <laughs> added lice license. Hey, it added that path. Okay, let's see what that looks like. You got to actually allocate memory. If you say you're going to use memory, you got to allocate it, my dude. It doesn't work if you don't do that. Why the heck would it work if you don't do that? All right, license. Hey, we got our license there. Which should be the unlicensed. Hey, look at that. No, MIT. Okay, that's fine. So even with your EFI system partition, legal legalities can follow you to the grave. That's all right. Num file paths greater than nine. Let's set this. We'll do max files. Well, it'll be it'll be zero to nine. So let's say ten. If it's greater than nine, it'll equal that. So really, I guess we could have above. It's just it's zero base, so I don't really know. Yeah, we'll just do this. Yeah, if it equals max, then I can't do that. Uh, let's just say D, and that'll be max files. Okay. All right, so yeah, we can do stuff like that. We can add uh, our license, which is gonna be here. And let's also do the other thing. Just for, for shiggles here, I'll add to the EFI folder, we'll say, we'll add that. So there we go. Uh, it didn't add under EFI, that's lame. It did add the license, and then it ended. So it only added the first one. Interesting. Oh. So it did this, malloced. It allocated to the file path. Maybe I don't have to do this. Well, file path equal this, but then file path zero is gonna be its own pointer, so that should be okay. I put argvi into that. I know that worked, and I know the slash worked. If not slash, it just puts it in there. That did work. Maybe this did not. That should have been all right from this position. Oh, no, I want to add plus one. Yeah, slash plus one. We want to move after that in the path. So if we're adding something like blah, 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 efi.c, you know, folder, we want to move past that slash to get the actual file name. We don't want to use the slash because I'm not doing that correctly in my in my programming to handle stuff. File name is after final slash. Oh, I should have this right in my brain and not debug as I'm going along. But that's what I'm doing. But it doesn't matter because it still didn't work. So, okay. I guess it can't find that file, maybe? That would make sense. Okay, so we have to have it within this folder. That would make sense. How am I going to know? I don't know where that file's at. I'm, get, I'm trying to get a file pointer to this within the program, and it doesn't know where just this after this is. It, it knows where this is because it's in the folder this is running from. I could add file pointers to that, maybe. We could add like structs. I might have to do this differently. Yeah, we could add structs maybe for paths and then pointers to those files. 
Because what am I working with in here? I'm trying to find it, right? I'm trying to find the name. The name's not there. I'm looking in here. And I'm opening the file and I'm returning false if it doesn't go through. Yeah, I'm opening the file. So that's not going to work, obviously. So I'd have to concatenate the paths within here or within the other thing and do it somewhere else. So yeah, actually, you know, that's, that's not going to work, actually. Okay. Never mind. We're going to say you have to move the files into the current thing. It's not going to work otherwise. <laughs> That's beyond what I've ever done before anyway with this program. So you know what? Multiple files, you're going to take the luxury as you can get it, and you're going to make sure it works on your own end. Which means this stuff won't even come into play probably, but I'll leave it there anyway. So, Oh well. If we copied it into here... And then we just, you know, did it like this, it would actually add the file, right? <laughs> but it won't do it because it doesn't know because I don't have programming to get the file pointer for the full qualified path. So, oh well. I mean, that's not a good way of doing things. Neither is forgetting what's in the background and the foreground, but that's, that's how we're going to do that. So, data files. Let's move on to data files. Data files, you can probably add however much you want up until how big the data partition is. I'm not. I probably won't have programming for that, though, to sum up all the sizes of these files and check. Probably should, but I probably won't. Just being honest with you. This is a, a bad beginner's, like, undergrad college project, so... <laughs> Let's do adding files to the data partition. So add files to the... Yeah, data. Basic data. We'll do AD or add data files. This will work a little bit differently because I need to make a function for this and we're going to have to open the file, but I can just add full file paths to this, but I'll just add the file name as the name. I won't add the full qualified path, but uh, this will be okay. So let's do this. We don't really have an arbitrary limit, but that's okay. I'll start at 10. I guess we'll do 10. You can increase it or remove that on your own. I don't want to think about it right now. Uh, that's all right. Um, start and ends with slash. I mean, I don't really care. We'll just add the file there. I guess I don't care. We'll just do this. We'll just grab this. We'll go through argc and argv. We'll get the next path, which is going to be data, data file paths, num, data file paths. And we're going to get that into there, and we'll increase. We'll just say we have a limit of 10 at a time. Put it after that point so we don't have weird issues. So data file fast is, is there, number of data partition files to add must be less than or equal to that, equals true, okay. And that should be okay, and we'll do this as well. Because this will increment i at the end, we need to get the next option, all right, so that'll be okay. So how do we add files to the data partition? Let's make a thing for that. I did that at the end, right? Yes. So let's just copy all of this. Sorry, I do want to make this like adding paths and stuff better. I just don't want to think about it right now. I want to, you know, go on to the actual EFI applications eventually, not do 20,000 things just making this image. And it would be cool to have people do that in pull requests or something later if if and they want to. They might not want to, so that's fine. But I don't want to deal with that right now, so... Above and beyond the Call of Duty, you can always copy the file in and add it anyway. So let's go through all of these data file paths. And I'll add... I'll say add file to data partition. I'll add file paths i. I'll say image. This will be data. Data file paths. And then I'll free that. I guess I need to free the overall thing as well, don't I? 
So I need to free file paths itself. Instead of just each instantiation, yeah, let's free that itself. After we free its members, otherwise there'd be a very slight memory leak of like 80 bytes, but that's fine. <laughs> or however big these paths are. 256 times number that we didn't free. But we'll do that after. Okay. Oh! No member name data file paths. Really? What did I name it? Mm, oh, just data files, because there's not they're not paths. That's true. That's true. I'm typing too much, so uh get rid of that. Did I just call it num data files? I did. Data files. Okay, data files and num data files. That's what we called it. One, two, three, four, five. So I'll just do uh, 5x. And then we'll go at the bottom and do that again. And this would have been wrong. Okay, implicit declaration. Yep, that's what I was looking for because we don't have this function made. So let's make a function to add stuff to the data partition. It won't be that bad. Let's put it above here. I'll just do it after this point. That's fine. Add file to the basic data partition for those Espanol speakers. I guess Boolean, I don't see how, well, this might fail, I guess. Yeah, we'll make it a Boolean. Because I am doing, I'll say if not, if not, I should add checks here. Error, not add file to data partition. Let's do. Options, data, files, I. Okay. I guess if there is an error with adding the path, that is a Boolean. And if it succeeds, it'll say added. I guess we should add a thing, we should add a thing for that as well. If we could not add, if not, Why doesn't it like this? Need another parentheses there. Cannot add blank to ESP. ESP. And this will be ESP file paths. Okay, just more errors here, that's all right. More error propagation, okay. And then we'll free it, and then we'll do the other. So, okay, how do we add stuff to the data? Partition, it's a little easier, it's a lot easier than adding to the ESP. We just need to seek to the data partition location and add the file. I'll probably also add a thing to add um, another file, actually. Depending how many we add, I want to add more files. If I don't rest my hand on the keyboard, I want to add more files to the EFI system partition so I can add them in another folder. Or what do we do? I, in I enforced an arbitrary 10 file limit, so. I don't want to add that many because it'll be like overlapping and, and that won't work. It won't be good. I could corrupt the file system pretty easily here. So, but I do want to add like an info file. But I could add it somewhere else, like under like EFI, just the EFI folder. Well, it depends where you add the other one. But if we have a limit of 10, you add them all to EFI, then this won't work. <laughs> mm, let's just hope you're, you're being careful. Let's just do that. <laughs> Because I want to make sure all the info's here that we need. If you had multiple files, we might relook at this tool later. But right now, I'm assuming you only add like a kernel or something. But you want to know info about the kernel, like if it's an L for a portable executable file. You want to know maybe the entry point. Well, you can read the header for that. You might want to know where it's located on the disk image so you don't have to search for it. Like that kind of stuff, right? 
So similar to the disk image.inf file, I would want to add like file name.inf that would have, uh, we could have the size, although that should be in the headers if it's an L for a PE file, along with the entry point. We might have to do fix ups for virtual memory locations. I'm not sure, probably would. So that'll be fun later on. Uh, but we could at least have like the disk LVA, like where it's at within the disk image. So we can just load it from there or at least know where it's at and then get the size. We could save the size as well. Um, file size, right? We could have like equals, you know, LBA value equals file size and you know, whatever. We could do that stuff. So I might do that. All right, just took a little break, need to refresh. It's been like an hour and a half, so yeah. <laughs> All right, I generally, I generally try to take a little break every hour, but yeah, sometimes that doesn't happen when I'm in the zone, so so to speak. So, okay, if we're given a file path, I don't want to do this. Let's say character uh, file, maybe file path, because it could be a file path. File pointer image, file pointer image, you'd want to do that. So let's say go to data partition. Maybe we only want to add one file. How would I add multiple? I'd have to keep track of how large each one is because I'd have to add one after the other. Hmm. Like this data LBA value. Let's make a, or stat. Well, I mean, we can make something static in here. That's all right. Not great, but I'll, I'll do this. 64. File LBAs, or we can have last, let's do that. Let's do last file LBA. Well, we need to know the size. So next, let's do this. Next available LBA, and I will update this value after adding each file so we know where to add the next one that it won't overlap any previous file that was added to the data partition. And I can have this be uh, persistent between function calls by making it static. That should be all right. Uh, we'll save location of next spot to put uh, a file in. <laughs> we'll just say that. Okay, so let's seek to the data partition from the image. I know where that is. It's the data LBA times LBA size. So some of these global variables I like just for sizes and things. That'll, that'll be all right. So we have the file. So let's F open that. We'll make a file. Uh, pointer, F open file path. I guess we'll add it, but when I print out info that we added the file, I'll just print out like the file name itself. I didn't want to do that. Why do I keep messing with the thing? I'll jump list makes me mad, man. All right. Press the dang old key on my keyboard. Print info to user. Um, yeah, I want to print out something at the end, like I do added, you know, file to data partition, right? And then I'll add like file path or file name. We'll just do that name. Or we can say we added file path to data partition. Like that's fine, but I want to say the actual name that we added. I'll do this from percent %s. I'll give all the info. So we added a file from file path. Uh, from path. Yeah, we'll just say that. Added this file from this path. So we have a name. So name will be file path. Well, let's, yeah, let's do that. Say we have a slash position, string r character, file path slash. If there was not a slash, name will equal the file path. Else name will equal slash plus one. There we go. That'll just, that'll just be the name to print, so that'll be all right. But if we want to actually add the thing to the path, we're going to F open that bad boy for reading, assume binary. 
won't mess with the line endings or anything. We're already at the partition, so we need to get the file size because we need to know how much to write to that data partition. So we'll do that. Similarly that we did a while back for adding other files, we'll get the file size in bytes and OBAs. And I'll F seek FP. I guess if the file doesn't exist, we'd have an issue though. So if we don't have that, that would be bad. Could not open file percent s. Okay, if we did get the file, let's get the file size. So let's F seek that bad boy to the end of it. And then we'll use F tell. If I can type, which I can't, F tell FP. I'll have bytes, two LBAs of file size in bytes. And we'll rewind that sucker. Because we'll have to read it again. Let's have a file buffer according to our file disk, our LBA size. Let's have a file buffer, we'll see alloc one for LBA size. And so I don't forget, we'll write the free write here first. So let's do 4i is 0i less than LBA, well, file LBAs. I plus plus. I'm going to want to start at the next available LBA, so let's change that when I seek. Offset from the data LBA. I just remembered this. I was like, I'm going to write data. I need to write data to the right spot. And I remembered I did that. Okay, so this will be better. So it'll start at zero anyway. So we'll just write to the first, you know, sector of the data partition. But depending on how big the LBA is, we'll update this value. So set next spot to write a file at. Let's do that. So next, next available LBA will add on the file size and LBAs. So if the file is like 10, 10 sectors long or 10 LBAs long, then the next time we'll write will be at, um, at sector 10 because we'll offset from the data LBA that amount. So that'll be all right. For each file added, not to EFI boot, but for each one added. Okay, so for each disk sector of the file, we want to write it to the data partition, wherever our image is currently seeked to, sought, sought to. <laughs> so similarly to what I did before, I'm gonna do bytes red. We're gonna read into the file buffer uh, one byte, OBA size, number of bytes, up to that amount if we can from the, uh, from the FP, the file that we're adding, and then we're going to write that amount of bytes back. So a partial LBA amount at the end, this will still work. We won't write a full LBA amount if the file doesn't take up a full LBA of space. We'll only write however much data is actually there and was read into our buffer. So read into the buffer, we'll write from the buffer. I'll buff one, actual bytes read, not LBA size. Read that, write the actual bytes to the image uh, at the location we went to in the image. Yes, okay. Then we'll free the buffer after, that'll work. Okay, then I wanna add an info file as well. I guess we'll do that. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's say we have an extra path here. I'll have info path. What do I want to do for this? I'll have to concatenate stuff onto it. Let's say, um, so that won't be in read only memory. We'll make it a hundred, just a little bit bigger, just in case we'll string copy into there. So this is not uh, good because I'm not using the in functions. I guess I'll try to do that. This is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I know that'll work. Oh, yeah. And I'll string cat this file name we get down here. So let me do that down here. We'll 
we'll add on what the name, just the final name into there. Of course, that's not going to be an 8.3 name, but it might be. We'll see. We'll get an error from our add file to ESP function if it's wrong, if it's bad. So that's all right. So this will say like EFI boots, you know, file dot whatever, if we have that. I guess it's however long the name is. We want to do dest not source for this, right? Maybe. Size of info path minus nine. Because that's the max that we can do, I think. And it's add path to ESP given the info path and the image. Okay, and then it'll say we added it if all is well. I guess if it's not an error, <laughs> if it's an error, how would I know? Um, it returns a bool, yeah, so I can propagate that. And it'll tell me if there's an error, I think. Well, no, that's what I did down here, right? Yeah. Just copy that. Duplicate that code, that's fine. We could not add S, and this will be info path. Is that all right? You know it's not. I can't program to save my life. Forgot to add standard error to that. And same down there. 12227. That's where I copied it from. So yeah, I should have realized I didn't do that. Add standard error to those. There we go. String in copy, truncated before applying to rename null, copy nine bytes, string same length. Yes, that's true. We need to add one more byte, I suppose. For that null byte, there we go. Okay. We did update. We need to add this stuff to that file though. So this is the file name. We added the file data, but this, this file name, right, I want to add as well. So I need to add like an extra file for that info, for the info file. Oh, how am I going to do that? Okay, so let's say, <laughs> I don't, I don't really know. I might just add like different things here. I might add a generic name. Before how I did this was if we were adding a file name like file.c, I would add a file named file.inf. But what I'm thinking right now, to be easier on me, I might just add a generic name, like file1.inf, file2, etc. And then within that, as a line, I can add like file name equals whatever, and we can search for that name within the data partition. Right, that might be a bit easier. We could just go through all those files on boot in an EFI application later if we want, if I remember. We'll see. So I might, I might do that. That would be okay. But that would be this, not this info path. This would be different. Uh, so let's do this. Okay. Oh, name I'm doing info path. I only need the name for that, right? Because I added the file buffer. Um, I want that for this. Because this stuff is separate where I'm adding to the ESP. This is beforehand. Okay. Because I wrote, I wrote the file here at this point, so I want to say I wrote the file at this point. Right, that makes sense. But after I'll add an info file for each file that was added. Okay, so we'll do that here. I have an info path, we'll have this to start off with. Let's just say it's file whatever. We need a counter, so let's say static um, file num. I'm adding a lot of uh, static vars here, not great. It means I'm losing my marbles, but that's all right. We'll start it at one, or we can just do zero and do file num plus plus. Uh, yeah, let's do s printf or even s n printf, but this isn't going to be long enough to matter. If I boot percent s, yeah. We'll do file percent s dot inf. Whatever file num is, yeah. Okay, so the first one would be file one dot inf, then file two, then file three, you know, so on and so forth. And we want to have this info within that. 
So I'm adding a file, but I need to create the file first, right? So really, I could have a name here. Of like 10 characters, because, well, the limit's going to be 11, so that's fine. I'm trying to think what I want to do here. Um, well, S printf. I'm all over the place. I'm really sorry. I'm going to get the file name and just concat it onto the end of here. And this will just be info file. Into that, we'll do file percent D, not S. This will be S down here. Actually, it's a UN, so we'll do U dot INF. File num. Okay, so that's the name of the file because I want to open that, you know, a file in F open. It'll open it in this directory and we'll add some data to that file before we write it to the ESP. Uh, okay, so how do I do that? We do the info path. We have that. Okay, so we need a buffer. We need to open the file. So let's open it. Let's file info file, which I already named it up here. So naming things the same is always going to work, right? FP, <laughs> I'll just do that. We'll open it for writing. We'll close it later if we need to. If not, info FP, my closing other things. If not FP, cannot open my closing it though. I rewind it, I write it. Here I should close it. So really, I could just open it with the same FP number again. I do want to close that file. All right. If I had an arrow, so I could not open this file, which would be info file. Otherwise, we'll close it again in the future. I want to add this data at least, probably something like that. Okay, so how do we write the data to the file? Uh, I did make a file buffer, but I closed it. Up here, <laughs> could do that again. I'll just do that again. And we'll free it again after. Let's allocate a buffer, let's write into there. We'll write into that buffer some data here, SN printf style. Let's write file name equals percent %s. I guess not the path, it'll be whatever we added to the data partition, which will be name. Let's add what OBA it is at. And I would know that. I would have to do that after this next available. So let's print that after all of this is done. Uh, if I can find equals, equals U. We'll have name, we'll have next available OBA. I guess I could name that starting LBA. That might make more sense. Starting LBA value. And I could do find replace instead of doing this, but yeah. There we go. That's where the disk LBA is on the disk, so we can get that later. And the file size, I don't think we'll need this. We might use it though, so. We'll do percent %u as well, I guess. Well, if it's a 64-bit, we will need to do the percents. Um, the portable versions there. Forgot about that, PRI u64. New line, new line, okay. So 
file name, file size is going to be file size in bytes. We don't need to save the OBAs, although we could, but I'll save the size in bytes and the starting OBA. Um, assuming we know how big the OBAs are, I guess you would have to know on your end. So <laughs> that's up to you to keep track of. You'll know when you write the file, this tool will tell you the OBA size, so that's okay. And then before freeing the buffer, we need to write the file. So we did F close FP, that's okay. Um, so I wrote to the, well, I wrote to the file buffer. I need to write to the file now. Yeah, let's write to the file. Uh, file buffer one, LBA size, or however big the buffer is, according to the data contained therein. And write to FP, right? Yeah. So that'll write it to our local file system on our host in this directory, but we need to also write that file in the disk image, the ESP. I'll just do all this after. That makes more sense doing that later. So I wrote to the file, we'll close the file. We'll get the path to add to the ESP, and I should do that, I guess. Could not add to ESP. Hopefully that works. <laughs> I have a feeling this is not going to work, but hopefully it does. Um, add path. So we're, if I'm adding to the ESP and I find EFI boot and whatever, EFI boot in the file name, I would know I have to add the file. Yeah, and we're opening the file, so it should look for that locally. Yeah, which is my issue earlier. Okay, so it'll find the file locally that we create right here, named this. So file1.inf, it'll find that, and it'll add it to that path. Yeah, so this should, should work. Hopefully that makes sense. I know I'm kind of scatterbrained still. <laughs> We should be able to add multiple files as well to the data partition. All right, let's see. What did I mess up there? Pointer targets and passing them out in different signedness. File buff is UNAT pointer. You need a character pointer. Of course you do. Why would you not need a character pointer? Because you're writing to a string. Like, come on, man. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's just the buffer. It's just the buffer. It's fine, we'll cast our troubles away. Cast the pain away, that's fine. It'll work, it's just writing bytes to it, that's fine. Argument two makes integer from a pointer without a cast, oh no. Is that an issue? Expected a size T? For SN printf, I thought you needed the other stuff. What do you need for this? You need SN printf, you need a pointer, you need size T, and then the format, and then the args, okay. Yeah, and then the pointer and then the args. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it's the end version, yep. Duh, okay. <laughs> do I have anything in here I wanna add to the data partition to check? I, does it matter? Our EFI.c, let's assume that's a kernel file. I don't know. There's not gonna be anything there. Let's just, uh, let's, let's make a little file here. We'll make test.c, well. It's not really going to print if we actually loaded it, but just for the sake of, of argument here. Um, let's make a kernel file. We're not going to do anything. This is not how it would work in the real world because we won't have a host libc. This is just an example. To get something that's a binary file and we can, uh, you know, get the disk size and everything to, to test things out with. So. We can have that. We have kernel at 17.8K. I did make already, so if we write and we want to add to the data sector our kernel file. Uh, our data size is one meg, so it still should have added it there, but it did not do anything. That's data size. That is why we did not set the data size. <laughs> I want to do add to the data partition or add data files. Probably would make more sense if I spelled it out. 
Segmentation font. Well, it's it's C that we're dealing with here, isn't it? <laughs> of course it is. Oh, of course it is. AD, add data files. Add data files. ESP file paths. Well, you know, that's not right. You know, we got to actually write the same thing. So I, I made that true all the way down, right? Except for the first part. <laughs> I corrected that issue. Corrected it here and here and here, but I did not correct it here. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. You actually need to malloc to the right actual data. Make sure that says data files, not ESP file paths, because that's not correct. Okay. Could not add file one that INF kernel. Could not add kernel. Well, at least I got the errors correct. It also said added kernel from path kernel. Like that's good. <laughs> uh, I got my my things messed up there. Yeah, add file to data. Got something messed up down here because I'm doing all this after that. That's true. I didn't add to the data partition yet, did I? Well, I added up here. We didn't add it from the path, though. Yeah, we didn't add a path to the data partition. So added kernel to data partition makes sense. So let's just read what the error looks like after that. Added s to date. This is fine. Too many arguments for format. At 884, added s to data. Oh, because I don't have the file path. We could just say added file path. No, that was right. Yeah, added s from file, because we could add a file from a different path. Yeah, that's fine. But I do want to keep that. That's fine. What was the issue? <laughs> Losing my marbles here. Yeah, that's fine, because the local path would be this, and that's what I told it to add at the command line. Could not add efi boot file one.inf kernel. Okay. If I boot file one.inf, yes, which is what I'm doing here. So info file. If I boot file one.inf, is that bad? Why did it try to add more stuff? I cannot add to ESP. What is this path? So I put into file this, path this with info file, yeah. I shouldn't have added kernel on the end. Unless I did that later. I mean, what I could do is set this all to null, so I know it's properly null terminated. That would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Properly null terminate your names. That might be part of the issue. No, I guess it wasn't, but that's okay. Could not add file kernel to data partition, but I did add that. Oh, but I'm expecting two things in the path. Mm. Let's fix that. <laughs> I'm expecting two files in the path. I just need to expect one file in the path. I just need one, and this doesn't need to say ESP. It needs. Oh yeah, it does. I'm in the wrong function here. All right, add data files. Yeah, because the one up here is going to be AE, this is going to be AD. Okay, maybe I'll cut this down in editing. I probably won't because I'm flailing about here. <laughs> no, I just do I plus equal one. That's fine. I don't need to add two things, right? I'm not doing that. No, that's okay. That's really interesting. So why is it saying that? Why is it trying to add the file? Because it added it once. I'm wondering why it's trying to do it a second time. And why it's trying to do this. Because I get that I make the path, but I don't know why it's adding kernel to that path. That's weird.
because it's putting that into info file and it's writing that onto here. But I'm not adding the I'm not adding the word kernel to here ex explicitly, so that's kind of that's weird. This is info path. Uh, I'm string catting the name. Oh, that's why I'm adding the name here. I don't need to do that because that file would not exist. Don't need to add this name here. I don't think. Yeah, that that would make sense. Mm, okay, so we added disk image, added kernel from path kernel, added yeah, because it had a different name, so it was adding twice for some reason for things that didn't that weren't applicable. Added efi boot file one inf. So what that means is, um, yeah, the data size. We should check that the file size is less than the data size. That would be good. <laughs> Like that would be a good check to add. I don't know if I want to do that right now. Check if adding next file will overrun data partition size. I guess I can do that though. Not that you would add that many files, but maybe you would. Maybe add a giant kernel with gigabytes of data and you don't have a gigabyte file and it, it's way too big. That would be bad. If we're getting the file sizes here, we have the size in bytes. Do that here. So let's say if starting OBA plus the file size in OBAs times the OBA size that is greater than or equal to our data size which is OBA times, well, I guess just data size, right? That are global. Yes, okay. There we go. Then that would be bad. That was easier than I thought. Error. Um, adding too many files to data partition. I'll just say, um, Can't add file percent %s to data partition. Data partition, uh, what's, the, what's the word to do here? Data partition size is percent %pri u64. And file would overrun this size. Okay. And all files so far would overrun this. I guess, does that make sense? This, this is a bad, I might change this error message text later. <laughs> Not the best error text. File path would be that and U64 would be data size. Let's do this, U64 and we'll have um, percent, this is awkward. <laughs> I wanna print how big it is in sectors as well colon and we'll have view 64 um, LBAs. There we go. So we can't add file. The data partition size is this, this many LBAs. And all files, we'll say all files added would overrun this size. Now that makes sense. I think that makes sense. As long as I put standard error to write too. I mean, I should check for the EFI system partition as well, but I'm not doing that and I don't want to think about that like I just did. What I do want to think about is if we add it and it works, what it looks like in the disk image in the file system. So let's do that. So FS0, we have EFI, which I added. Should have nothing in there, but we do have boots. 
and we have file1.inf. So if I cat that, what does it look like? We have a bunch of extra data because I wrote an OBA size. I probably, I could do string length and not write the full OBA, but file name, kernel, file size, disk OBA is gonna be zero. We probably want that to not be zero. We want it to be where it's at in the data partition. And I just said starting, uh, starting OBA. So yeah, that's why it says that. Where am I adding it? It's here. So let's do data OBA plus starting OBA. There we go. Offset from um, start of data partition. All right, it's an absolute value, but we'll offset from that because that's where it's at. Okay. And instead of OBA size, well, I want like how many bytes this would take up. And I guess I don't know how many bytes that would take up until I write it. So I don't need to write that much. That's me writing to it, writing file. Let's not write an LBA size worth of data. Let's write a string length size worth of data. That'll be how big the string that was written to it is. That'll look a little bit better. And it doesn't like it because I did string like, um, all right, just cast, cast your troubles away. Don't worry about them. All your troubles will be casted away like Tom Cruise on that island. And you are Wilson watching a man go crazy right now because he's programming way too long without breaks. So what are we doing here? Because he just wants to finish out the video series and he's, you know, taking too long to do that but that's okay. There we go. So we only have the data that we wanted to write to it. That's good. That's what I wanted to see. I guess I should figure out the object type, but I can figure that out later if I want within an EFI application, probably by just reading the L for PE header. You know, I could check if it is in here. That might be too much for this tool. I can deal with it later if I want, right? This is a generic tool. So, okay. I'm gonna say that works for writing at least one file there. Let's, I guess I need to check if it writes too. Let's write the kernel, let's write, let's write the license file as well, just in case. So I know that it can add both. Added kernel, added file one INF, added license to data, added file two INF, okay. And let's make that sucker huge again, FS zero. If I boot, and we have file two to INF. So file one, we have this, file two. To do arrow keys, not control P. File name license, file size 1091. And uh, yeah, I was gonna say, why doesn't it say 48? It's because it's in the data partition. Disk LBA. 71680, interesting, 71716, is that correct? 71680, wonder if I remember DC. 71680, divide by 512, 512 divide, okay, 140, 140 OBAs, so let's multiply. Ooh, we get that number. That's pretty big. Well, it's like one meg from the end of the disk. So that does make sense. 1048576 divide by that. 35. Yeah, 35 megs and the whole disk. Just making sure it makes sense. The whole disk is 36 and that makes sense. It's at the start of the data partition, which is up to like the last meg on the disk. So I'm assuming that's the right location. Hopefully it is. <laughs> that's all. I'm just hoping that's the right location. It makes sense because I'm going by the starting OBA. I'm not incrementing it till after. And it starts at zero, so that, yeah, that makes sense. I think that would be right. That'd be correct. Uh, okay.